Good morning. Good morning. Happy Easter. Happy, Easter. Happy Resurrection Sunday to all. The night is over. The morning is here. Bulletins. Christ is risen. Risen, as he said. Sadness has vanished and tears are no more. Death. Death has fled. Life is victorious. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and are glad in it. Come, assemble for the feast of life. The feast of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Many of us have already gathered and worshipped and met the women at the tomb. And it was a beautiful morning for Resurrection Sunday. And uh, for those of you that, that are listening to me twice this morning, bless your little pea-picking hearts, as someone would say down south. Um, I, I'm wondering if there are any announcements. Most of our announcements have been about Holy Week for the last few weeks. Uh, Lamar, is there anything? we need to announce today I, I, I think I think I think uh, other than Bible study the women's Bible study is finished and uh, I've j Heather and I have not decided if we're starting back in two or three weeks but we will let you know probably in three so we have time to get the books um, are there any prayer requests this morning if you are joining us online, thank you for doing ministry with us. And if you have a prayer request, if you will type it in, David will get it to me and we will include it in our prayers. Uh, so are there any prayer requests from the pew? Are there any praise requests? I know there's at least one. <laughs> Caroline, stand up and give your good news. Well, well first I want to praise the Lord that my aunt, my grandmother, is doing so much better eating three meals a day now. Um, and I also praise the Lord that He's provided me a full-time job. Um, and He's so faithful and it's going to be in faith North Carolina, which is quite funny. <laughs> she has been going on faith and she has a job in Faith, North Carolina at Faith, is it elementary school? It's a new charter school. A new tra Faith charter school. So this is what happens when you walk out on faith. Uh, and for those of you that do not know Caroline, the rest of her family has gone home to prepare lunch for the neighborhood and the family that's coming in. But her father retired from Georgia and so they moved up here to to be closer to their North Carolina family in the middle of a pandemic. And she had just finished school in Tennessee. So she lived in Tennessee. She lived in Georgia. She moved to North Carolina in the middle of a pandemic, not knowing anyone or where she may possibly find a job. And so we're so thankful. It's been a long journey. It's been a long journey for you, I know. We are just so thrilled that this day has come. Uh, are there other praise reports? Seems like I saw someone else. Well, I just praise God that that tomb is still empty and he is still in heaven and we are still here and, and able to, to talk about it and worship. Um, this. <clears throat> so if there is no other prayer request, um, we will declare Easter has officially begun. Almighty God, through Jesus Christ, you overcame death and you opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we who celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection may by the renewing of your spirit arise from the death of sin to the life of righteousness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you are able, will you stand and join us on page 304?
believe in the God of life, whose breath is in us, and whose mercy encircles the creation, we believe in Jesus Christ, who loved us indestructibly, and who shared our pain. He is with us now, as he promised, even to the end of the age. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who welcomes us into the household of faith, gives us gifts in abundance, enlivens our hearts with joy, and urges us into the world to testify without fear to God's justice and grace, hoping against hope for the promised realm of peace. We love one another while we live. We honor every creature God has made. We stand against the powers of sin and death. And we bless the earth and all that fills it. Glory, thanks, and praise be yours, O living God, now and forever. Alleluia, 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 amen. But, but thank you for coming and sharing Easter with us this morning in Golden Hill. Let us go to God in prayer. Oh, living Savior, we come to you this morning with so much gratitude in our hearts, so much joy in our soul. We just have no words to express the thankfulness we have for what the cross means in our life. For that moment that you decided to go with your Father's will. The moment you could have run away but you didn't. The moment you decided that we were worth the pain and the torture. And Father, we thank you for the glorious surprise on resurrection morning when the women went to the tomb and you were not there. We thank you for victory over death so that we can live with you forever and ever. Father, on this Easter morning, we thank you, we ask you to please be with those that cannot be in a house of worship or surrounded by friends and family to, to thank you for, for our salvation. We ask that you be with those that have somehow found themselves lost on the streets. We, we ask that you be with those that are at home and missing someone that they love so dearly that was with them last Easter, but they are no longer there. We ask, Father, that you be with all that are suffering still from this disease, this COVID, that, that has just taken over our world and changed everything. But we're, we're grateful, Father, that you have made a way that we can come together. We ask you, Father, to be with all that are suffering in sin, that are suffering in illness, that are still trying to beat the, the virus, that are still trying to beat that cancer, that are still trying to beat whatever that, that, that is, is ailing them. For some, it's just as simple as a backache. But for others, they're struggling to take their last breath. So for everyone between a headache 
And the last breath, God, we ask that you be with them. We ask that you comfort them. We ask that somehow they remember this is our day. This is the moment that defines who we are as Christians. And that they can find some way to lift their hands and sing hallelujah. And to be grateful. And to be able to remember what keeps us all unified. Our baptism, our salvation, and your resurrection. Father, we ask, especially on this Sunday morning, that you forgive us of all of our sins. Those that we know we have done. Those that we do intentionally. Those that we do unintentionally. Forgive us for the hurts and pains that we have caused those that we love and that love us. Forgive us when we do not do what you want us to do. Forgive us when we do not love others as we should. Forgive us, Father, for any time we take a breath without being grateful that you gave it to us. And Father, now, in this moment, we lift our personal petitions and ask for forgiveness for our personal deep down sins that we would never share with anyone but you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And now, Father, we sing these praises to you. Please hear our voices as we lift them up. And, and bless, bless this service. Bless the, the songs we sing. Bless the prayers that we hear. Bless the message that is given. Bless the scripture that is read. That someone will leave here today knowing that they met you right here in this place. Knowing that you are walking out that door with them. And, and that they are going to walk into the mission field knowing that they have you by their side. And Father, give us the strength, the energy, and the desire to tell our story, to tell the Easter story to someone that needs to hear it this week. We ask all these things in your Son's name, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now at this time we have a chance to Give back to God a part of the wonderfulness that he has given to us. in this community, and in this nation. Amen.
I know you all just sat down, but if you would stand for the gospel reading from Luke chapter 24. But on that day, that first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly there were two men with dazzling clothes who stood beside of them. The women were terrified, and they bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the, li the, look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has ris risen. Don't you remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day he would rise again? Then they remembered the words of Jesus, and returning from the tomb, they told all of this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told all this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them like an idle tale, and they just didn't believe them. But Peter got up, and he ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our scripture response is page 177. And it all comes down to this. You have been carrying around this engagement ring in your pocket for weeks, if not months. You know you want to marry her. She's the love of your life. You've got it all planned out. There's a special restaurant, the perfect song, the beautiful flowers, the right words to say, and it's time. And you take a knee, and you look in her eyes, and you ask her to marry you. Now it's up to her to say yes or no. It all comes down to this. If you haven't been feeling well for a while and the doctor's trying to figure out what's wrong with you, they've run tests but they still just can't figure it out, and you've been waiting for what seems like a lifetime, although it really hasn't been that long, and now you're back in the doctor's office and he wants to deliver the news in person. It seems like your life is hanging in the balance. Those test results are going to reveal a major turning point in your life. It all comes down to this. You have waited for that 20-week ultrasound. Some of us just wait till the pregnancy's over. It seems like you just can't wait any longer to find out if it's pink or blue. Your life is about to change dramatically. And the ultrasound technician does his or her magic. What a great new day for a new mom and dad. It all comes down to this. That phrase always points to a defining moment in our life. It's a, a mind, it, in, in your mind, it's, it's, it's a critical stage of one way or the other. It's a historic moment that you're never, ever going to forget. In other words, it's a moment that you've waited for all of your life up to that moment. Well, this morning, 
we celebrate Easter. And I want you to know that this morning is one of those times. This is a defining moment in all of our lives. This is the most important occasion. This moment at sunrise this morning is what we have all waited for. It all comes down to this, my friends. Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. I want you to see two important realities about this resurrection of Jesus Christ. I know you know this. You hear this every year. But he's not here. He's not in the tomb. He has risen. And that's the most important event that has ever occurred in any of our lives. The story of his birth, his death, and his resurrection. Jesus Christ is a story that absolutely changed the whole world a little over 2,000 years ago. Those are the most important events that have ever occurred in the most important story that has ever been told. Now his birth was normal, we know that. Mary carried him full term. But, but even so, his birth was unique. I mean, you see, he was born just like us. Um, she, she had the pains of delivery. I'm sure she probably threw up for three months like many of us did. And she probably even craved pickles and wanted Joseph to make a 2 a.m. run to Walmart to get her some pickles. We don't know. But his birth was totally unique. He may have come into the world just like every one of us did. But he wasn't just born of a woman. He was born of a virgin. We know that. He was totally untainted by the nature of sin that each of us inherit at our birth. And his death, his death was not atypical of any Roman execution. Jesus was not the first person to be killed on a cross, and he was not going to be the last person. He, in fact, he was crucified between two criminals that day. You can ride all over town and you'll see three crosses in many churchyards. But his death, even though it was the same death that any common criminal of the day suffered, his death was unique. For in his death, he paid the price for your sin and for my sin. He satisfied the judgment of God against all of us. He purchased salvation for all persons that would turn to him in faith. The resurrection, now that's got to be completely unique, right? Well, friends, not really. I mean, it was unique, kind of, sort of, but really, if you read your Bible, you know that the Gospels in the Old Testament, the, he, he wasn't the only one to rise from the dead. There were resurrections all through both, both books. Everywhere that, that Jesus went, he seemed to be interrupting a funeral. He, he turned many funerals into festivals because he brought many back to life. We remember Lazarus. We remember Jared's daughter. We remember these people. And there was... Elijah and the old, we, there's, there were resurrections all through the Bible. He even empowered his disciples to raise the dead after he was gone. So his resurrection was not the only resurrection, but it was completely unique. You see, everyone else that was raised from the dead, guess what? They all died again. Jesus Jesus is eternally alive. Their resurrection was temporary. His resurrection was final and complete. He rose forevermore. He now resides at the right hand of our God, our Father. There are four major religions in the world I'm sure that you are aware of. Buddhism, Islam, Judaism and Christianity. And each rests on a historic personality. Buddha, Muhammad, Abraham, and Jesus Christ. And over the tomb of Buddha and, and Muhammad and Abraham, over their tombs, you're going to read the word occupied. 
But over the tomb of Jesus, you will read, He has risen. Listen to what the text says in Luke 24. And don't miss this. The angel said to the women, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. He told you on the third day he would rebuild that temple. He keeps his promises. It all comes down to this. He is risen. He conquered death. He conquered hell. He conquered the grave. He conquered all of his enemies. He's triumphant. He's victorious. And he's glorious. The account of the life of Jesus Christ is the only biography known to man that does not end with death and a burial. This biography, this story, this man, Jesus Christ, it goes on forever. And that is why we celebrate today. It's the most important decision that you're ever going to make. They returned to the tomb and then they went and they told the rest. Are you going to leave here today and tell someone your story? Someone out there is waiting. The women, the first evangelists, the first ones to go out and share the resurrection story. Remember last week we talked about letting stones do our storytelling, doing our rejoicing? Don't let the stones tell your story. We have a story and God has given us the ability to tell that story. And not only is this the most important event that ever occurred, but it's also the most important decision you will ever make to tell or not tell the story. You see, it all comes down to this. You and I are faced with a choice. We believe in the faith and we experience a complete transformation. And we either believe it and we share it or we turn away in disbelief and we reject Jesus. That is the choice that we have as we leave here today. The women who, who heard of the resurrection, who saw the, re who saw the empty tomb, they didn't see the resurrection, but they saw, the, saw it and the angels told them about it and they ran and told disciples. They had to tell the story. Just like the woman at the well who Jesus talked to. She had to run into town. She had to tell the story. When is the last time you got excited to tell your story? I'm not the only preacher in this room. We all have a story to tell. They went to tell the others. In other words, they saw what happened. They believed what happened. And they could not not tell someone what happened. But there was a tragic ver uh, verse in this scripture that I just read. And it, and, and it starts with the apostles didn't believe them. And I put myself there sometimes. If, if, if I saw Jesus' body taken off of the cross and, and, I, and I walked to the tomb and I saw him put in that tomb, would I believe these women who probably looked a little manacle as they were sharing this story because I am certain they were over the top with joy. I don't know if I would have believed them either. I would have probably been just like Peter. And, and so the scripture reads they didn't believe them. They thought that they were just telling some kind of idle tale, some fairy tale or something. And some of us here today, we're going to hear these words. We're going to rehear the story that we've heard all of our life. We're going to hear about this Jesus Christ and his birth and his life and his death and his resurrection. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to question it. We're going to wonder about it. And, and, and you might walk out this door and you, and you might be thinking, that is an amazing story, but you're not going to share it. I want to challenge you today to consider the claims of Jesus Christ. This is not a fairy tale. And I know there are many people in this world trying to tell us that we are foolish to believe this. That we are, are, are somehow all wrapped up in this cult of Jesus Christ, of Jesus freaks. But we know that it is true. We know that it is not a myth or a legend. This is reality. And the same Jesus Christ that rose again from the dead, He lives today. He lives with us. And, and he, he will live with you 
with, within you through the Holy Spirit. And I don't know about you, but I don't believe I could take one step without the Holy Spirit within me and Jesus beside of me and God directing me. But they didn't believe. But then look at verse 12. But Peter, remember Peter who denied Jesus three times? The others didn't believe, but Peter did. Or at least he wanted to so badly he wanted to. So Peter, he jumped up and he ran to that tomb. And he didn't just see the, the, the stone rolled away and got satisfaction. No, not Peter. Peter had to stoop down and he had to get down low enough to where he could look inside of that tomb. And he went in and he saw. He saw the, the linen, the grave clothes laying there. He saw the face cloth folded up. And he knew. He knew. And he left that place. And he was marveling. And he was excited. And he was filled with joy because of what had happened. You see, some of us will hear about that empty tomb today. Some, you're going to tell your story to somebody about that empty tomb. And their life might not change. But most of us most of us are going to get excited. We're hearing this story again. The old, old story that's going to prick our heart. And we'll become revived. And we'll discover what it is for Jesus Christ. The promise He made. That He is who He says that He is. And He has done what no other person would ever do for you. Or could do for you. He has offered us our salvation today. There was a young man one day... And he was on a visit to see his friend, John, who lived on a farm. Many of y'all live on farms, and you can relate to this. And he entered the gates of the farm, and he parked his car, and, and he started walking up to the house. And, and as he walked up to the house, he had to pass the barn. And as he got to the barn, he looked at it, and, and he started scratching his head. And he saw something that was really odd about that. And he, he saw 20 targets painted on that barn. And, and on closer inspection, he looked and there was a bullet hole right in the middle of each target. Don't you hunters wish that you could shoot like that? 20 times, dead center in the bullseye. So he went and knocked on his door and, 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 and he was talking to his friend. And he, and, and he, he told him, he, he said... He said, I just saw the strangest thing on the barn. You, somebody here, is it you? Somebody is a crack shot because I saw 20 targets. I saw 20 bullet holes in the center of the target. And there were no other bullet holes in that barn anywhere. And I just got to ask you, who in the world did that shooting? And John said, well, I did. And the man looked surprised. He didn't know he could shoot that good. He says, now wait a minute. There's 20 targets out there of bullseyes with 20 holes in each bullseye and you're telling me that you did that? He said, yep. I shot every, every shot. And he says, when and where in the world did you learn to shoot like that? And John, John said, it's simple. I shot first and then I painted the bullseye. <laughs> a lot of us are just like John. Maybe we know the right words to say. We know that we should get up on Easter morning and get dressed and come to church. But it's not so much that we've hit the bullseye by walking in the door this morning. We've just learned how to paint well. It is possible to go through the motions of being a Christian and not live in your life right on target. You've got a choice to make and it's the most important decision you'll ever make. It all comes down to this, my friends. The moment that changes everything. You are the living gospel today. You are faced with the reality of that gospel that we read week after week. The perfect and sinless life of Christ. 
His death for you on the cross. His victorious resurrection that we celebrate this morning. His offer of salvation for those that deserve and don't deserve. And to be perfectly honest, there's none of us that deserve that salvation. You are forced at this moment, it comes down to, to make a choice. You can see for yourself, you can respond in repentance and in faith, and you can hear the story, and you can choose to keep it to yourself and be unchanged. But this changes everything. It is that moment, it is that moment that separates victory from defeat, that separates winning from losing, that separates life from from death. General Wellington, for those of you that had to take uh, world history once upon a time, he commanded all of the victorious forces in the Great Battle of Waterloo that virtually defeated Napoleon. You all remember this, this little historical moment. And that story, the story has been told that when that battle was over, Wellington sent the news of his victory over to England. And, and they, they had to do it like in a series, like this boat put up the, the message and then this boat and in different stations until it finally got to England. But you know how London and England are. Uh, it got to the continent and, and the, the message was Wellington defeated Napoleon at Waterloo. That was the message being sent. But as that message was being sent, a deep fog set in. And as a result, by the time that message got to England, the only thing that the people could see was Wellington defeated. It was much, much later, till after the fog cleared, that they realized they had a victory. The people, what they originally thought had happened, got to celebrate a completely different outcome. The same is true for us today. When many looked at the Good Friday, events of Good Friday and the death of Christ, they only saw defeat that day. Yet on Easter, on resurrection morning, God's message, the fog was lifted and we got to read the whole message. And that resurrection story is spelled victory. It all comes down to this. How you respond today to His resurrection, the offering of salvation, will determine whether you experience victory or defeat. It all comes down to this. Do you believe? Do you believe in victory over the grave? It all comes down to this. Will you answer the call today? And will you share the story of the good news. Jesus gave his life for all of us. And today we celebrate that victory over the grave. Let us celebrate and honor him with more than just pretty dry, dyed Easter eggs and more than just a family dinner. Let's make sure that all that we dine with today, all that we hide eggs with today, all that we meet today, let's make sure they understand what this day means to us. Let us tell the story because really it all comes down to this. In the name of the Father, our risen Savior, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you will stand for our closing hymn, it all comes down to this. He lives.
old story of victory over the grave once again. Amen. Amen.